flies. We're pretty vocal in 99 about people expect our governments to be fair and just and balance off all of the rights that people have. And, you know, you can't put people to it's, you know, Well, why didn't you make EMC implement their plan? What's that? Why didn't EMC? Why didn't you let EMC implement their plan? The um, they got 200 casuals in this province that could have been We, we were told that no emergency um, uh, services would be provided at all. So, you know, so is that a breach that of the contract? That's a, that's, a, that's a total problem. Well, well, thanks very much contract? for coming tonight. I, I appreciate that. Actually, we we yeah. appreciate the yeah. 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 The difficulty that the union yeah. faced, or we faced, yeah. with with right. a with the legislation that's introduced is yeah. that we, we discussed amongst ourselves for months that we'll provide an essential service yeah. ad, ad nauseum discussion. The difficulty is that we aren't yeah. a closed union. Yeah. We have close to 200 families who are working with this problem, who aren't in the union, the EMT fights, uh, fights us, and have them in the union. We if want we agree, to If we agree to provide 911 service only yeah. and not do non-essential yeah. transfers, all the EMT had to do was bring in non-unionized workers to carry in fact, day by day with the yep. schedule. Mm -hmm. And now we're in a situation where we're well above 24%, we're close to 75 to 90% coverage. We're doing all the 911 calls, charges are doing all the transfers. We've lost the leverage we have with the employer that says, well, we can't do anything on, on, on the wage side because the government controls all the money. So well, it's like having two masters. Well, well, my hope is that the uh, we get through this and that we have an opportunity to work through some of these other things over the next uh, number of years and uh, my hope is that we never end up in this position again. And we absolutely hope that too. Yeah. Do you not believe yeah. that the, the relationship between EMZ and its employees is fractured beyond uh, repair you know now? Something? I, it's I think difficult. it is. It's very absolutely. difficult for me to, to comment on that because a, as you know, although we are a funder, the EMC is the, the employer. employer and uh, I uh, Appreciate it more than you would know, and we feel the, that the, 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 the more difficulty. than you would know. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys work it, yeah. right? And yeah. we look, yeah. and I, I take what you guys are saying at face value. Mm -hmm. Folks are do a tremendous job, and I think, like as the premier said, when this thing is over, I think we've all got to have serious discussion about Definitely. employee relations within the, with, with that company. Mm -hmm. If I don't know what they carried in my scrum on Friday, and I said, look, this is. Um, don't take this as anything more than what I'm saying right today is that they asked me about the relationship and I said well yes uh, and would EMC be guaranteed the contract and I said look all of a sudden is that there's some very difficult times happening here yeah. and I think we uh, when this is all done that I think some various serious discussions between the employees and the employer have to take place if, if um, and I'm as guided a bit of collective bargaining, I can tell you one good thing out of a very crappy situation is when the everything bottoms out, which it has, I believe, to you and your employer, it's the time to rebuild. Mm -hmm. And whether Absolutely. it's with EMC or somebody else, I think we would be certainly open at some point. Our door is always open. It was open to Terry and Dwayne anytime they wanted to talk to me. What about if the government would take us over? It's, you know, again, all these are probably issues. Save They're money. issues. I probably They're issues. They're issues. We like again. You know, yeah. we still we're doing what we can financially in this province, mm -hmm. and again, that would put more debt on our books. But look, in just so you guys are aware, the yeah. media is portraying that we want yeah. Alberta wages. That's not the case. No, we know that that's not fiscally responsible. No, to make hundred three thousand like the oil, oil in, in Nova Scotia yeah. is not capable yeah. of that. We understand that. Yeah, but we want fair wages for what we do. Mm -hmm. That sheet of paper is saving yeah. millions and millions of dollars a year to the government of Nova Scotia and the taxpayers. I mean, I, mean I, I love being a paramedic. Absolutely. And I'd love to be paid the same as a bus driver. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be really happy with that. Yeah. So, come on, we got to get our priorities okay. straight. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you. No, thank you guys. Appreciate it. No, no, look.
I look in your eyes, shake your hands, and I hope we can. Thanks, Frank. Thank you very much. Thank you. What you do? Thank you. No, I'm from here originally. And actually, I just happened to be home because Mr. Corbett, I believe I know your son. I played rugby with him, Stephen. Oh yeah, yeah. That's right. I played for Caledonia a few years ago. Okay. I'm going to let against you. See you tomorrow. No, thank you. Good guy. Thank you guys for being so respectful too. Yes, I appreciate that. Says a lot about your character. No, you says a lot about your character. We'll see you tomorrow. Cause waits, but we want to fight for what we believe we're worth. Okay.